Last time we saw the print function and how we can use it to print variables in single line and multiple lines as well. So let's explore the print function a bit more. Let's suppose you want to print some meaningful sentence in the code. And so in order to do that, we're going to use inverted commas. We're going to use inverted commas and we're going to type in the sentence. So let's type data science and then we press print and enter and we can see that this is the output we get. So this tells us that we can use the print command to write down text. We can print text and we can print numbers, we can print variables. We can actually do the same thing in the same sentence as well. Like for example, if we want to write um, variable value, is equals to 45 we're going to you print it and so this is the result it becomes quite useful whenever you want to specify what you're trying to visualize okay so the same goes with a couple of other things for example if we want to print characters we're going to use single quotes okay so one more thing is that if you want to write text we can use double quotes or single quotes so if I write single quotes and variable it gives me the same output so it can either be single quotes or double quotes to write text but that is the rule we get okay so let's look at another example if you want to print something in another line for example I want uh, the value of 45 to be in the other line so uh, whether it is the uh, numerical value or the text let's look at an example for both of them so variable or may should I say data and I want to print science in the next line so what I'm going to use it I'm going to use a and L character which is the new line character which is the backslash n this ensures that the a succeeding word or sentence is written in the next line science so now we have the data science in the other line so but there's a thing you should notice here that the science is a little bit indented towards the right there is a space between the word s this is because we have used space over here so let's we remove the space let's see what happens okay so now there is no indentation and we have successfully printed science in the other line and the same concept applies with the numerical value and so now you have to you should ask yourself where is this space coming from is this space coming from here or maybe it is something else so what happens if I remove the space over here it is still there um, there is no space over here this is just uh, you can say the uh, printed output of the numerical value the space over here the indentation although it seems like it is an indentation that is not exactly an indentation it is not caused by the text we printed out okay so these were a couple of ways we can use the print value and we can use it to print the end of statement and other things there are a bit more a couple of functions but before we go into them we need to learn about operators okay so let's learn about a couple of operators we're going to start with the mathematical operators there are a couple of mathematical operators which we can use let's go with the uh, addition subtraction division and multiplication and exponent okay so we have these okay they look uh, a bit so we're just gonna change this into bullet points and if you want to add bullet points we can use it by using this dash so uh, we can use it using the dash um, so if you want to add an asterisk that would cause it to be bold if you want to bold it then we will be using it double asterisk to bold the text so by adding double asterisk and dash we can convert our text into bullet points which are written with bolded text
Okay, so regarding operators, it's simple as mathematics. Addition does with plus, subtraction, minus, division, divide, multiplication, multiply, and exponent. It is the power of the, okay, so the exponent might be a different, uh, somewhat different than the traditional notation of mathematics, but apart from that, all other operators are just simple mathematics. So let's get into it. So three plus four, we have seven, and we can do these operations with other, five plus, uh, four minus two, five multiplied by three, and we have 15 and division let's divide 4 um, 16 divided by 8 so we have 2.0 so let's look at this output the output is 2.0 so the output is in points or float because there the number and the division output can also be in points for example if I divide 16 by 5 I would get 3.2 the division operator outputs the number in floating points. However, we will see later on that if we want to convert the floating points into integer, we will use typecasting and we use a different function, a different default built-in Python function for that. Okay, so let's look at exponent. So exponent is somewhat similar to multiplication since we're in exponent, we're just going to repeatedly multiply by the exponent number. So if we have two raised to power three, I will multiply two three times. Two into two into so the output should be eight. So if I want to write an exponent term, I would write two. Since the number of values over here is three, I would like the repeated multiplication of two with itself three times. So I will write two asterisk asterisk three. So as you can see, this is the representation of using exponent or you want to repeatedly multiply a number with itself, you will use the as double asterisk for this function. Okay, so now so far we have quickly seen the different operators. Just one thing I need to cover more, if there the value on the right side for subtraction is greater, uh, let's say this, so the output should be negative, that's pretty obvious, it's just simple maths, nothing more. And Python follows the DMAS rule, division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. So if I write here 16 minus 2 plus 4 into 1 divided by 5. So the output should be 14.8 and the it works from left to ne left to right. So the first operator would be division and the second the output would be multiplied by 4 and add added into two and so on and so forth so this is the way so python will follow the d mass rule division multiplication addition and then subtraction okay so we have seen about the basics of operators now let's do something interesting let's see if we can do the same operation with variables as well a plus b and the output should be 17 okay so let's say I want to store the output into another variable I would write total is equal to a plus B and then I would print total and the output would be printed and that is 17 as well so in this way I have stored the sum into the total variable so one more point I need to add, whenever you're using writing code, the variable names should be meaningful. For example, although for example, I've been using A and B and I've been using simple characters for that, but when you're writing professional or code at an industrial level or you're working on a project, research project, which needs to be open source or which another human being will read and his ability to read it properly and to comprehend it will depend upon your coding skills. And that is what defines a good programmer, to write a readable and comprehensible code. So rather than using A and B, I should write it number one, and this would be number two. And this would suggest that I'm actually adding these two numbers. So now my code is self-explanatory. So this seems rather not useless and 
not really necessary at this stage because the operations are quite simple. It's quite obvious that we're going to add. So why do we need meaningful variable names to tell us that? It's because when we are doing something, a uh, code that is not so basic and traditionally comprehensible that many of uh, the programmers don't even know about. So then these meaningful variable names convey a certain message. Although we also add comments with the code, but a good code will always have meaningful variable names and it will be well commented so that it is readable and comprehensible to anyone who reads it. Okay, so let's apply the same addition concept to strings as well. Although in strings, it serves as concatenation. We will look at concatenation in depth when we study strings, but I want you to apply the concept of addition uh, over here just so that you can connect this with uh, the printing so that you can just learn a couple of more about printing which we will might be using ahead so that you won't get confused. So I'm just going to introduce one little concept. So what I mean is that we've seen that we can do this so we can also do this. Okay, I've done something wrong. What did I do wrong? Hmm. Okay, let's just initialize these um, numbers again. Okay, maybe I my system went offline for a bit. Okay, so whenever this happens, you just have to run the cells again. So this is another important thing. If this happens, it means that you need to rerun the cells above. Okay. So okay, so we can do this using print. So we remember that we can type data science okay so we can also after studying the plus operator we can also do something like this so in this way we are going to concatenate these true strings into one string so the output should be data science. So there's no space between it. So in order to remove that, we're going to do this. So you must be thinking what would happen if I apply different operators. Okay, I'm going to leave that to you to explore on your own, but it should give you at least a sense of that we can actually apply the operators into strings as well. We will discuss the concatenation operation which we have just seen in more detail when we will be studying strings, but for now, this is just a little bit information I wanted to give you because I might be using this printing statement in this syntax in a couple of next lectures. Uh, so it was important to tell you that. Okay, so, so far we have seen the different operators, addition, multiplication, and all these were mathematical operators. So let's look at another category of operators which we call the comparison operators and which enables us and gives us the power to compare two different variables, two different values, two different strings and so on and so forth. So let's look at the comparison operators. So the first and foremost comparison operator we will discuss is the equality operator which is represented by this. So this is a binary operator, which means that this should be given two values to actually enable it to perform, to give us the output. So one value should be five and the other should be five. So now we've given it two values. So this equality operator tells us whether the left value is equal to the right value. In this case, it is. So it will return us true. So these comparison operators are also known as Boolean operators because the output they will give us is either true or false. So if I were to replace five by some other number like six, it would give me the value of false. Okay, so let's look at the opposite of equality operator, which is the not equal to operator. So let's do the same operation. This time, let's try different numbers. Okay, so let's check if 8 is not equal to 9. It is true because 8 is not equal to 9. This exclamation mark shows the, is actually the not. And the equal to is the checking whether uh, is checking equal. So not equal. So this operator is in order to remember it, it checks that whether the left side value is not equal to the right side value 
and if it is true it returns true somehow if we actually want to check if 8 is not equal to 8 which is in fact false it should return false okay so it was pretty basic so far and we can s apply the same concept to variables as well if you want to initialize 5 and 6 and check a is not equal to B which is true and a is equal equals to B which is false okay so after looking at these comparison operators of equal to and not equal to let's move on to another operator which would actually check whether a value is greater than the other value or less than the other value so that those uh, operators are greater than and less than is 5 greater than 5 no they're actually equal so the output should be false is 5 less than 5 no they're actually equal so the output should be false pretty basic and straightforward let's check if we can get true from it if is 5 less than 6 yes it is so we'll get um, true is um, 6 greater than 5 so yeah it is so it just checks that let's move on to greater than or equal to and greater than or equal to it checks basically two things whether the value is greater than and if it is not greater than is it equal to so like before we when we were checking the same values in greater than or less than it was returning false when both of the values were equal in this particular operator it's not going to do that it's going to tell us that if these values are equal it is true so let's check it yep it is the same same goes with less than or equal to and it will also return true when we have less so it's basically checking two things so less than equal to and greater than equal to have merged the greater than equal to a uh, greater than and less than operators with the equal to operators okay so we have seen a couple of comparison operators so let's move on to logical operators So the logical operators deal with the boolean values and they tell us whether two statements are true or not. So the three types of logical operators we will be studying are basically they exist that exist are and or not. Okay. So these are the three ones. So there are other logical operators like NAND or NOR, but basically they are made by combining these operators. So if you want to make them, you have to use these operators to make them as well. So let's check at these out. If we have these Boolean values like true and false, and if you want to check what would happen if we apply the AND operator. So the AND operator is represented by use writing AND. So I'm applying the AND operator between a false statement and a true statement. So it is false. So this tells us something about AND. What it tells us that it is something like multiplication operator between zeros and ones. The thing, so they basically we're talking about Boolean values. So if it is true and true, true and false. So as, so there's one thing uh, you should notice over here like if I'm writing true it is not in blue color like the one above which means that the first letter T should be in capital okay and false and we have false and false uh, one other thing you should know that it doesn't matter the position of false and true so what I'm what I mean by that is whether it is true or false true and false or whether it is false and true it is actually the same thing okay so let's see so we have done something wrong here what we've done wrong is that we have not used the print statement and whenever we're not using the print statement only the last line of code will be printed out in the kernel so let's use the print statement to verify our experiment And we have true false and false so this is the functionality of and 
it can only be true if both of the values are true otherwise it is always false so i if either of the two values is false the result would be false moving on let's talk about the or operator so let's just copy this and and i'm going to replace the and operator with the or operator and we write it by with the same or and so so what does the or operator do the or operator works a little bit different than the and operator what the or operator does that it is something exactly opposite of the and it will always be false if both of the values are false and if either of the values is true it will always be true so let's run this so as you can see it is only false when both of the values were false and it is always true when either of the values is true okay so we have seen the two operators and an or now we're going to talk about the not operator the not operator is not a binary operator it is a unary operator which means it does not need two values it always needs one value so we're going to write not and we're going to try type true and the output should be false and what not does is it's pretty simple it just converts input boolean value to its opposite so if it's true it will convert it into false and if it's false it will convert it into true so as you can see now it is true so not false is true and not true is false it is the same thing as english language right so it is not true so it's false and not false is true so now the question is why is it meaningful these logical operators we're using true and false like why or when is it useful why are, do we have these operators so the thing is if you remember previously we saw these comparison operators right so the output of these comparison operators was false or true okay so this tells us something that how we can use logical operators to come up with more strong programming instructions which would ultimately enable us to compare two statements or expressions let's have a look at this so imagine we have two statements 5 is greater than 6 and 6 is less than 5 so the individual output of these two equations would be 5 is greater than 6 false and 6 is less than 5 false so what if I need to compare the two and I will say let's put an and in them okay so I'm using I'm comparing two different expressions two different outputs so the output should be false and false and is false okay so we do the same thing with um, something different this time so this time one of the outputs should be true right so the output should be false this is a very powerful tool when we are using the if else statements when we're whenever we are using the while statements which we will see later on in the course when we are studying the for loops and the while loops and the if statements so this gives us a lot of power over comparison operations whenever we are comparing two different big expressions okay one last thing i need to add before we end this lecture is we need to talk about operator presidents So operator presidents, what is the operator presidents we have for and not or and uh, or. So the first is not, the second is or and and in the same level we have or. So you can say that this is the operator precedence for these three operators so what do we mean by operator precedence the operator precedence tells us that if we have these three operators in the single statement in what order will they be executed so the first operator will be not and the second will be and and or so let's try something let's look at an example we have not true and false or false or true okay so what would be the output for this so the first operator that will run is the not so 
the output would this uh, of this would be false so and then it doesn't matter which of the and or or operator would run first so let's go with the, this one not true is false false and false is false false or true is true so the answer should be true and it is so this is the operator precedence we have so i would suggest that you try different examples with it and you can play with these um things you have learned today and try and experiment new things so that you can learn and experiment and practice and it becomes better and better